What I wanted to jump straight into, I didn't want to waste any time because I know you boys have got very, very strong opinions on this. You guys done your video on the unofficial pundits channel uh, through the week and you were talking about United as a powerhouse and still a club and a brand to attract these big name stars. Obviously you guys are obviously very positive and you're still very strong in that belief that we are still that kind of club. Well, I, I look at it like this. We signed Di Maria and Falcao, no Champions League football. We signed Paul Pogba, Zlatan. Come on, Zlatan, everyone knew he still wanted to win a Champions League yeah. without no Champions League football. So we still sign big players. How many players don't want to come to the Theatre of Dreams? Don't want to get paid a lot of money? Because listen, at the end of the day, money is big in football now. But listen, but you just touched on it before about the lip, and you said like, well, look, we haven't got Champions League football now. We know we've got the funds to probably bring in any player we wanted to. But someone like Dillit, we said off camera that his agents probably use United if he does end up at Barca, but he's boosted it, that United are interested to you know, boost his deal that he's going to get at Barca. Or well, just to force Barca's hand, really, because obviously Barca have to let players go before they can buy anyone. We all yeah. know that. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just like a, a ploy, just like I say, just to force Barca's hand, hand really, more than anything. Chaz, the other thing I wanted to mention to you, you mentioned some of the boys we signed there. So we had Di Maria, we had Ibra, um, obviously Pogba's coming in still here. Falcao came in. Out of all of them, for me, excuse Pogba because he's still here and I think he still will remain at the club. But the other three, I thought flopped. Apart from Ibra, I thought Ibra was a fantastic signing to bring at the club and at a time we needed him. Did you think But the other two were just like, it was their last kind of payout uh, or, or their last chance to make it, you know, with a, in a Champions League spot or with a, with a top club? No, because in case I'm wrong, and I hope no one holds me to this, yeah. I'm pretty sure Falcao went back to Monaco and won the league. Yeah. So it wasn't just a payout for him. Yeah. He really wanted to come to United and do well because then he went to Chelsea after as well. Yeah. So he tried. I just think when you've had big injuries and they're coming to the Premier League in for Manchester United, well, that's why I say we're still a big club because the pressure, you don't have the same pressure in other clubs. I don't, yeah. I don't care what anyone says. I'll give you an example. People say Man City, they're not a big club. Yeah. And that's why Pep Guardiola has been able to come in and show them his football. Where with United, they've always had a playing start. Yeah. Now we finished second last season with Jose Mourinho, but no one was happy with the way he was playing football. Yeah. Why not? We finished second. Exactly. Now everyone's moaning, saying, oh, but we finished second, we finished second. They just moan about anything. So I think, for me, the Falcao thing was, was a statement, but also a player who wanted to do better. Yeah. It just didn't work. It, didn't work it just it didn't work. Alone, it was a loan. Yeah. It, was, it, yeah. was a, it was a risk worth taking. Di Maria was very unfortunate. Can't say that he come for a final payout. Season before he finished... Uh, his last game for Real Madrid, yeah. man of the match in the Champions League final. I just think that he was a very unlucky. All right, he hasn't gone on to PSG and lit the, uh, set the world alight either. But sometimes these things happen. So obviously, look, your boys are saying, look, you still believe we're, you know, we're a big powerhouse and we can attract these big transfers. But look, we're hearing reports in the week about Ashley Young potentially being named as a club captain. Like, where do you sit with that? Like, for me, like, I think he's not our leader. He's not a leader, and he surely can't be Manchester United's captain. Okay, I will put it like this: I put it to any fan. Who would you make captain? Because I'm hearing people say they don't want Pogba as captain. For me, for me personally, I'll be Pogba because I'm, I'm for Pogba and I'll build my team around it. But Bro, I know you're talking generally. Yeah, I'm for Pogba. Yeah. I know I'm Nick's Pogba. for Pogba. Yeah. But the thing is, the way I look at it is, if it's not Pogba, because I hear a lot of fans saying don't give it to Pogba, who do you give it to? Yeah. Who do you give Who? Really, looking at that team. There's De Gea or Pogba for me, that's so it. But he's going to be. Want to sign the he's going to be going in. And can you really give Pogba? the captain's armband after the stick that you gave him after the Cardiff game. Yeah, how, yeah. how does that sit with all the fans? Do, do you think we, we potentially could have a bit of a messy situation next season that if Pogba stays, De Gea, I think, like you said, I think he's going to go right this summer. But if, if, if Pogba stays, are we going to have a bit of a situation at the club now but where there's a split division with the fans on who wants him, who doesn't want him, if he is made club captain or not? Is it going to get a bit messy? The way I look at it is, the world, or not the world, should I say England, hated David Beckham in 99. At the end of the season, Man United fans loved him so much. Even England fans absolutely loved him because it's all about what happens on the pitch. Do you think as fans we're quite a fickle bunch? Not just United fans, but football fans in general. Do you think we're too fickle that our opinions jump ship too, too often too quickly? Well, bro, look at the Dilip thing. It was all over social media. He highlighted it to me yesterday. Yeah. Straight away, someone put up on there. What did they say? That um, he's not old enough. He's not experienced enough. It's not the type of player we need to sign. So this is someone that's gone to the Champions League semi-final yeah. at 19, 19 20, captain, as well. captain yeah. and you're saying that he's he's not the type of player we want. Who do you want? So you'd rather have Koudabali over yeah. someone like Dilip? I actually saw someone on Twitter, I can't remember their name, right, say that this was a bad move by Woodward 
because he's now going to ruin our transfer um, budget, not transfer budget, our wage structure, so and delete. So now you're not happy about that. It's actually just to moan about anything. People just like to moan about anything when it comes to Man United. Do, do you think with Woodward, because we knew this summer is going to be a big summer and we're only really just at the start of it. We're still waiting for the European or world transfer kind of window to open. Do you think Woodward is going to back Ollie and, you know, we're really going to make a statement this summer? Because we know as fans how important it is that if Ollie's the man for the job, we've got to be patient. It might take two or three transfer windows. We can't jump ship in November, October, November. Look, I'm not expecting us to be challenging for the title or top four. I'm not. I, I'm honestly not. But as fans, we've got to understand that, look, we've got to be patient for a couple of years now, but just stick with Ollie. Is he the man for the job? So, as soon as I saw you, I I wanted to say to you, and then we said, let's, you know what, let's get it on camera. Yeah. When David Moyes come in, yeah. we said, oh, we want Gareth Bale. Yeah. He said, no. Yeah. Humiliate the club. Yeah. We said, we want Tess Fabregas. He said, no. Humiliate the club. We said, we wanted Thiago. He said, no. Mula. Now, I love the way the club's quiet. That's what people are reporting stuff. Yeah. Look how many reports are coming out. That ain't true because all these reporters don't know what to do with themselves. Because at the end of the day, Man United gets you views. Yeah. Man United gets you likes, yeah. comments, retweets, yeah. whatever it is. So, I love the way we're going about our business because no one actually knows who we're going for. We said that about long stuff. We've only spoke to Newcastle. That doesn't mean we're going to get him. Sessignon, we've only spoke to Fulham. The only one you can say concrete is what we're meant to be, Daniel James. And I love that because you don't want to be humiliated in the transfer market like it was under Moyes. And that, you know what? I don't blame Moyes for that, like I said before. He just wasn't that guy. I blame some of the hierarchy at Man United, not just Woodward, but everyone who's involved in getting Moyes in because they should have known, do you know what? Can this man pull in his brains? Now we're not doing that. We're keeping everything under wraps and it's best because work this way. If we don't, if we just sign a lot of youngsters, we'll be a bit upset but we'll just get on with it. But if we come out and say we want Dili, we want Sancho, and they both turn and say no, it's going to look so we bad. But, but what do you make, because obviously look, Sancho is reported heavily, like linked with us, right? Obviously now we're not in Champions League, surely that's going to have a massive impact on his decision or not? Well, playing at Dortmund and being destroyed by Spurs, and it's not taking anything away from Spurs, but they're not exactly the best team in England, they've been destroyed. If he sits there and looks at himself, wait a minute, am I actually going to win a Champions League at Dortmund? No. So what's he doing? Just play it. He just play it. So then players might as not leave Lille. Pepe might as not leave Lille because he's playing Champions League next year. What to stay at Lille? Come on. So that comes down to obviously to the players' ambition. Look, United, big, look, you come and play in the biggest stadium in England, obviously bar Wembley, but Spurs aren't there anyway. Um, you know, it's a big thing for them to come and do. So you guys are confident. Look, I know we're going to catch up with you guys as the summer progresses, as we go into the new season. Um, if you guys haven't already, check out the Unofficials uh, Pundits channel on YouTube and on the socials. Keep up the views, guys. Keep up the, the, the opinions as well. One thing I like about the channel is you guys have a bit of a, um, a thought process and a vision. You stick with it, you don't jump ship. So I really like that. I, I just, you know what we try to do? I see so many of these so-called fan pages or channels. All they want to do is run down the club to get more likes. I love the club. We can get relegated. I'll be heartbroken, but I'll still support my United. I'm sick driving down every week, bro. 100%. But listen, enjoy the game, boys. We'll go, we look forward to seeing the proper team out there today, yeah? <laughs> Thanks for checking out the latest video. Don't forget to click here for more of our great content and give us a subscribe.